Hi there, and welcome to Studio SN. My name is Sarah Newman, and today we're card making with Kurataki Gansai Tambi watercolors. Watercolor is a super versatile medium for card making, allowing you to create fabulous effects with brayery and resist techniques. And that's what I've done on the front of my card. This dot design that you see here has been done with a resist effect using embossing powder, and then my background has been brayered with watercolors. Both of these are really easy to do, so let's take a look at the process. I'm going to start with the resist effect here on the front, and I'm going to move aside my card and bring in my stenciling and embossing tools. So of course the first thing I need to have is some cardstock onto which to do my stenciling and embossing. And I'm using a watercolor cardstock because I need something that's pretty sturdy and will stand up to the embossing as well as the watercolor. Now I've also got my clear embossing ink pad, and this is a Versamark. You can use whatever you happen to have on hand. And then I also need a clear embossing powder, and this one is from Rare Earth. The other things I have on hand, of course, a piece of folded scrap paper, and this is just so I can funnel my excess embossing powder back into the jar. And of course, I need to have my heat tool here for doing the heat embossing. So I'm gonna move aside my cardstock and get my stencil taped down in place. I'm working onto my craft sheet, so this is going to act as my palette as well as um, just protecting my work surface. Now you'll notice that I've got my stencil taped down, not to the cardstock itself, but right onto my craft sheet. And this is just going to help tack things down and keep things secure while I'm doing my inking. So then what I'll need to do is just take my embossing ink pad take off the lid and press this right down onto my stencil. So I'm not squashing it, I'm not leaning on it, I'm just pressing firmly and evenly around on here. This is going to help the ink go through the stencil and onto my cardstock. Now that I've got that done, I'm just going to gently lift this up and set aside my stencil. I think if I tilt this, you can see where some of those dots are. I know it's a bit difficult since it's clear. Then I'll bring in my folded piece of scrap paper and my embossing powder. And you need to do this next step pretty quickly so that the embossing ink doesn't dry. And then what I'll do is just tap off the excess. I can use quite a lot. I can be fairly liberal with my application because this white sheet of um, scrap paper is going to help me funnel all of that right back into the jar. As I'm tilting this, you can see where the embossing powder is clung to the embossing ink, the wet embossing ink. Now all I need to do is just bring in my heat tool and heat set this. So as soon as I do that, I'm going to come right back and do some watercolor. Now that I'm done with my heat embossing, I have a piece that looks like this. So I think as I'm tilting this, you can see the shine of this. If you could touch it, you would also feel that it is slightly raised. So this is the embossing that's going to act as a resist to my color. So I can go ahead and add my watercolor on here now. I wanted to show you the watercolor set that I'm working with. This is from Kurataki. This is the Gansai Tambi watercolor set, and it is absolutely delicious. So you can see on here, I've got 36 different colors, everything from beautiful rich reds into really cheerful yellows, some greens, lots of beautiful blues and um, violets, all the way down to white, to pearl, to gold, and to copper. It's a really nice full set and one that I'm using a lot. Now you'll notice I've got a couple of empty spaces in here, and this is because I've already pulled out the colors that I'm using for this video. But I wanted to show you also that it's nice you can take the color pans out and use them individually, especially if you have a small workspace like I do, or if you're coloring on the go. Now you'll notice underneath each one of these, there's the number and then there's some writing in what I assume is Japanese. I believe that's the color name. I'm going by the numbers. So you'll notice here that this is number 42 and also printed on the back of the pan is the corresponding number, which means that I always know where things go when I need to put them back and keep them into a nice flow of color order. Now, a couple of other things about this set, if you're ever wondering the names of those colors and you can't read Japanese, you may want to hang on to the insert sheet because that gives you all of the names and the corresponding numbers on here, which is really nice. The other thing that you get on the inside of the box is a swatch area. Now this will come blank to you and you fill in the colors here, which is a great way to not only get to know your watercolor set, but then also to have a, a nice little cheat sheet as you're working and you can choose which shades and tones you're looking for right off the bat. So great things with the watercolor set. I love this one and it is really just coming in so handy. 
So now I can add my watercolor on here. I've already pulled out the tray that I need. This is number 37, it's the dark pink. And I'm going to be using the watercolor um, brush also from Kuwaret's Hockey. And a couple of things I want to show you about this. The reason this is so cool is because this plastic barrel here can be filled with water. And so what you'll do then is just unscrew this top and simply hold this under the flow of water. Gently press right here as you're doing that and that will help the water fill into the barrel. Then you simply screw this back on and you're ready to go. To release the water from the barrel, you just gently push and that's going to give you kind of a watercolor on the go. So you can see here I've got my watery medium going here right into this pan. And what I'll do with the water brush is simply color over here. And you can see immediately that white of the clear embossing powder is acting as my resist. And I'll just color this in here. Of course, the more water I use, the lighter my color will be. The less water, the darker and more intense my color will be. And if I have it too intense, I can always go back with more water and lighten it as well. So there are lots of possibilities with this. And then all I need to do once I've got my color on here, and you can see that beautiful resist showing up already, I just need to let this dry and then I can move on to the next step. So the next part of the card is brayering. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to do my brayering technique in a, a two-step process because I've got two different colors I'm working with. This really pretty pink as well as the lemon yellow. Of course, I also have my brayer on hand and I'm working onto my craft sheet, which is going to be my palette. Now again, I'm going to use one of the water brushes to get the color from the pan onto the craft sheet in order to brayer this. Really easy process. So let me move aside that brayer, move aside the yellow, and once again, I'm just going to gently squeeze the sides of the water brush to release some water into the pan. And then what I'll do is just scribble this right onto my craft sheet. If I need a little more water, I just need to squeeze that again and get that water going. So once I have a bit of a puddle here, then I can take my brayer and I'm just going to gently run this through the puddle and then right onto my cardstock. And as you can see, I get a really beautiful instant background. Now I'm going to let this dry before I add my yellow on top. So actually what I'm going to do here is clean up this pink and then bring in a piece that I've got that has already dried, just in the interest of time. And that's to make sure that the two colors don't um, blend into one color, which looks wonderful if that's the effect that you want, but it wasn't what I wanted for this card. I wanted to keep those two colors separate. So coming back in with my lemon yellow and again another water brush also filled with water. I'm going to mix this up a little bit, get a bit of a puddle here onto my craft sheet. And then I'm going to set this aside. Now I do need to clean off my brayer because of course I've got that pink on there. So I'm just going to take a baby wipe and remove some of that color. And then once again run this through and then add it right on top. And I love using a yellow as my finishing top layer because I think it just creates such a beautiful glow on here, just lightens things up really nicely. And then I just need to let this part dry as well and then I can use it as my background and combine it with my resist effect. So what I'm gonna do is bring back in my original card and talk about the process of putting this all together so I've used that brayered background, mounted it up onto some black cardstock as a nice contrast, wrapped it with gold ribbon, added this beautiful resist piece on here, and then also a stamp sentiment from Altenew, and a flower motif, a little gemstone, and a bit of ribbon down here at the bottom. So this is how you can use watercolor for brayering and for resist effects. Thank you for joining me on Studio SN. For more ideas and inspiration, please visit my website at sarahnewman.com. If you like this video, I invite you to subscribe to Studio SN on YouTube and I'll keep you updated with a new video at the beginning of every month. Again, thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you again next time.